it's really interesting, this uh, piece by uh, Nelson Hultberg, Why the Libertarian Party Fails, speaking as a libertarian. Um, or maybe he's with the National Independent Party. I'm not sure. He's, he's, he's his, uh, that candidate oh, cannot campaign on ending the income tax in the Fed like Ron Paul did. He said what needs to be done is to recruit a prominent free market conservative such as Ted Cruz or Mike Lee to campaign on the four pillars of reform. An act of simplified 15% flat tax. Right. So people who only make six to $7,000 a year are paying 15% of their income in taxes. And people who make a billion dollars a year are only paying 15% in taxes. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, he says, so we will stop the redistribution of wealth that allows government to grow so relentlessly. Now, the redistribution of wealth and government growth have nothing to do with each other. Redistribution of wealth is to accomplish a social good. And if I can remind you of the missing half of the sentence that is so often quoted, the first half of the sentence that everybody knows we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then there's a dash, and the sentence continues. Which has to do with why, for example, we have a progressive income tax. That to secure these rights, to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. There you go. So, and that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Happiness. Declaration of Independence. So, okay, anyhow, the flat tax was his number one thing. The number two, this is, this is how we get there incrementally, right? We don't call for an abolishment of the income tax altogether, which would just throw us into a world of boom and busts. We would, we would be right back where we were in the 1880s and 1890s. But anyway, he, he says, we don't, we don't do that. We do this flat tax. So it helps out the billionaires and it screws the middle class and the working people, and the working poor in particular. Number one. Number two, you enact Milton Friedman's 4% auto expansion plan for the Federal Reserve. They, supply, they increase the money supply by 4% a year, which is stupid. He said this will reduce annual price inflation in our economy to zero. No, it won't. The Fed doesn't control inflation. You know, it, it, these guys, they think they understand economics. It's a theology. It's a religion. The Fed has wildly expanded the money supply since the crash of 2008. And we have not seen inflation. In fact, what it has done is it's kept deflation at bay. On the other hand, there have been times when the Fed has reduced the money supply and it didn't throw us into a deflation. The, money, the, 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 the Fed expands or contracts the money supply based on basically two criteria. One, if Congress refuses to do its job, and, and Bernanke came right out and said this about a year ago. We did a whole show on it. I mean, he said it in, a, in the kind of Bernanke speak that he's famous for, but he came out and said it. That if Congress doesn't do their job of keeping the U.S. economy functioning by providing appropriate rules and supports, so this is like saying if the NBA doesn't do their job or the NFL doesn't do their job, by making sure that the goalposts are actually standing there, by making sure that the fields are, are appropriately mowed and that the, the, the white lines are sprayed on the grass. Uh, I guess now it's all AstroTurf, but whatever. You get my point. If the, NFA, if the NFL doesn't do their job of providing referees and enforcing the rules and maintaining the infrastructure for a football game, you're going to have one god-awful football game. It ain't going to work. And so basically what Ben Bernanke said is if Congress is not going to do their job of keeping the game of economics, of an economy running by providing appropriate regulation and appropriate boundaries and appropriate goalposts, and, and, and by the way, the NFL provides the footballs that they use to play with, 
if the federal, you know, if, if, the, if Congress will not, you know, provide basic infrastructure, if they're not going to rebuild the roads, if they're not going to rebuild the, the, the water systems, if they're not going to, 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 you know, if Congress is just not going to do this stuff, that it's just simple, common sense stuff. And Congress has been refusing to do it for six years now because they want to destroy the Obama legacy. If Congress, Ben Bernanke said, is not going to do this, then we, the Fed, have to. But the problem is the Fed has this very blunt light knife or this very large hammer, uh, however you want to describe it. They only have one tool. Congress has a virtually infinite number of tools. They could, they could say, hey, we have underemployment. Let's create a jobs program. The WPA is back in existence. Put people back to work tomorrow. Make the government the employer of last resort. It could, do, it could be done. They can extend long-term unemployment. They can they can change the rules of the football game, right? They can say hey, the minimum wage used to be seven twenty-five. Now it's ten ten. There's all these things that Congress can do, literally millions. The Fed can only do one thing. They can increase or diminish the supply of the 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 the, the supply of cash relative to demand in the marketplace. So number one, they are trying to put money into the marketplace to to make up for the damage Republicans are doing in Congress. And number two, and really this is the, mo the more important one, is that as the economy contracts or expands, the money supply needs to contract or expand in concert with it so that there's always an equal amount of dollars chasing the same amount of goods and services so that you don't have inflation. Or if you're going to have inflation, that expansion is small and consistent year to year. And the Fed's been actually doing a very good job of that. They've been doing a very good job of that since about the 1940s. So, anyhow, back to these uh, libertarians. Number three, vigorously cracked down on illegal immigration, right? Uh, which will produce self deportation deportations. And five, end our police the world foreign policy. Well, we got one area of agreement. You're listening to the Tom Hartman program. Call eight six six nine eight seven T H O M. That's the thing about libertarianism. I mean, just like a stopped clock is right twice a day, the libertarians are right on a couple of things, and those are the only things that the Republicans want to talk about. 